So today we're going to finish up with the getting the trailer ready for camping, starting doing the water system today. And uh, wait a minute, there's a breeze come up. Let me get the sock. It was down around 25 degrees last night, Easter weekend 2016. But I think that's the last really cold night for a while. So we'll do the water. I really had hoped to go camping this weekend. I had a couple days off. Um, in my garage it won't go below freezing. So, But first thing is we're going to clean out the hot water tank. We emptied it in the spring, but we didn't clean it out. Um, if you have a your, your anode rod, looks this good. This is mine. This is three years old. And I, I don't get hard water. I use my house water almost exclusively. I don't put camp water in it because the water is so hard in some places. We have really soft water where I live. Naturally, New York has pretty soft water because of all the limestone. This is the hot water tank. And down underneath here is also the water tank valve, which we will also open. Because we want to empty all that antifreeze out of the system. And then we got one of these, and we'll put this in here and clean out the hot water tank a little bit. We're just turning that around in there, letting it uh, spray all the sides of the tank and everything, and maybe me. Try to keep the cameras from getting soaked. I'm going to unlock the water and get into the water. This is my water tank. I'll open that up. See, put some place to stick that. Now I'm not, not, I'm not losing the antifreeze or anything out of the tank anymore. I'm going to rinse this out with a little of this. Now I'll rinse that tank until it doesn't show pink. Can you see that that's pink? It's coming out just a little pink. I don't want to fill the tank. I want all that to run out. So I'll just turn this on every now and then and rinse around in there. And turn it off. Let it empty. Let it empty till it doesn't run pink anymore. I threw a mason jar under there so you can see the, the water has kind of gotten pretty clear. So I think I'm done rinsing it out. I've um, run it dry four or five times and sprayed that inside. Now remember I still got the uh, the bypass on the hot water heater on the inside. Let's let's go in and see that. We're gonna do some inside stuff so let's take we're gonna take this cap off our drain because remember we should have antifreeze in there too. You can see there's pink stuff in there moldy pink stuff at that is inside the drain cap and yes I put a chain on my drain cap and uh, having those screws in there does uh, allow it to leak just a tad but it's wash water mostly clean wash water so I don't really think that's a big deal to have that drip just a little bit so the bypass is still bypassed none of this water we're going to turn on the pump And we get the pink stuff out of the water lines. And that should be coming down outside. Now, the next place we have water is the outside shower. And we're going to turn that on.
And we've got pink there. Oops. Now I'm only doing the cold water. Just the cold water lines for the moment. I want to get them clean first. So I'm only doing cold water. And each one of these methods gets you a little wetter. <laughs> and I know I'm going to get flack from people because I'm using a black garden hose. But that's not so bad as long as the water is running. The problem with using a black rubber hose where it'll give bad taste to your water is if, um, if it sits in the sun and the water sits in there. I mean, if you've never drunk out of a hose in your life, I use a black rubber hose. I use my regular garden hose to fill the tanks that run a long, a long time, five or six minutes before I actually use the water that's coming out of the hose. We'll be sanitizing the whole water system as soon as this all goes. All right, this has run long enough. I'm gonna go now and change it to hot water side. Starting first, shower. I'm gonna turn the water, cold water off and go to warm water. See, there's, there's pink stuff in the warm water. And that's going a longer, farther distance. And now remember, we have the plug out of the hot water tank so you can see no water is getting into the tank. And we flush that pretty good. Not for my camera. Since it's a potable antifreeze, it's non toxic, it won't hurt the animals. Um, I let it go on the ground and uh, I rinse it down pretty good. It's not going to stay there. We've turned off all the pumps and uh, the water's just draining out of the main tank. Just as I said, it takes quite a few rinses of the main tank to get that water flavor out of there. We're going to put the we're going to put the anode rod back, and we did wrap it with a couple of wraps of uh, Teflon tape. So it should go right back in there. It would be much easier with a socket, but I don't have a socket this big. So that should be good. You can put the cover back on that. Now what I do when I sanitize my uh, water system in the spring, I take a big one of these and uh, I fill that with the Clorox and I just squirt that in my tank while I'm rinsing it out. I'll rinse the tank two or three times. I'll take this, fill it with the Clorox, squirt that into the tank and immediately run the water and you want to smell the chlorine come out of the faucets and stuff and then once you get the smell really you should shut it down for, and then the next day flush it then you should be good to go uh, the recommendation from the health department is 10 milliliters per 10 gallons i do use 60 milliliters to begin because i want to shock and kill anything that's growing or living in there clorox chlorine is good for most things but not everything so don't take risks contaminating your water with untreated water from ponds or things like that and thinking you can just Clorox it and uh, make it good. So, I have got the deed. And just remember what bleach does. <laughs> You're going to put this in water and it's going to be fairly strong. It's not going to be as strong as you might use it in your dish, your washing machine. But it's still bleach, and it will ruin clothes, sneakers, things like that. So, um, I've got 60 cc's. I'm going to put that in here and squirt. I figure that, that's about as safe as I can be without getting that on myself. Now I'm going to finish filling the tank with water. And mixing that around in there with that nozzle on there. I 
I got some of that on my hands as it splashed out and it has a good strong chlorine smell. So I know I've got good chlorine in there. Now to go in and push that water through the system. All right, we're at the sink. We're going to turn on the turn on the pump. And the water's coming out. Okay, so they're both off. Now, I'm going to open my bypass. I'm going to fill the hot water tank. And I've turned the hot water on. The tank is filling, but it isn't full yet. It's going to take six gallons to fill that tank. Hot water tank is six gallons, cold water tank is eleven. Here it comes. And that is chlorinated water. Now we go out and put some to the shower. Now we'll do the shower. Again, just until we smell chlorine. Which there's some in there. Now we'll do the other, the hot water. It attacks. In there. This is about 50% Clorox. And I'm just going to put another squirt in here. And then I'm going to fill that tank up all the way again. now that this is all Clorox and then I'm going to take this off then I take my water hose which I don't use very often I've used it here and I keep it connected like this so it's connected to itself nothing can crawl in there and then again I've got this, this jar of Clorox, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to fill that up so it's not quite so strong. And I'm, I'm going to let that go into my hose, and But I'm going to put that down my water hose so that I know my water hose is sanitized. I have hooked up my hose to the hose to rinse the chlorine out of the, the inline. And I don't have it on there tight and I have pressure release over there. So that's clean in the inside line. I'm not sure that's really necessary, but I do it. And I figure that's all sanitized. Now, everything's been chlorinated. 
and it's going to sit in there until tomorrow. There's no rush to clear the chlorine out. It'll uh, it'll be good water. It'll be you need to clean it up before you drink it because it'll taste like terrible. It doesn't hurt to have a little chlorine in the water to keep it sanitized the next time you go camping. So that's the water system on on the camper. So you ready to go camping? Where are we gonna go? Thanks, folks. I'll see you soon.